Open Up starts now on WSBT 22 with Pete Byrne and Carl Deppenbaugh. The inmates have taken over the <laughs> asylum. Welcome to Hoop It Up, everyone. Pete Byrne has a night off, so I'm Carl Deffenbaugh alongside my main man, Adam Darangowski. We've got a packed night ahead of, for you, and it starts with a three-way tie atop the NIC. Somebody, though, is going to fall off the pace tonight. Marion, Penn, and Riley all seeking that number yeah. one spot, but there's only one spot. And so that's going to be because the Wildcats and the Kingsmen were hosting each other at the Palace tonight. Penn hosting Riley, former Penn star Austin Torres was in the house to watch uh, his squad build a seven-point <laughs> halftime lead. Third quarter belonged to Matt Truella. Strong drive here into the paint. That would make it 31-20 Penn. Then Nate Miller, they work it around the outside. Miller is open from long range. Makes it a 13-point lead for Penn. Back the other way, Junior Scott started heating up from beyond the arc as well. He had 19 points tonight. But Penn would pull away. Truella, 14 points in the third quarter alone, wow. 18 for the game. Kingsman wins 72-52. And get this, it's the 100th win for Coach Al Rhodes at Penn. So the other team factoring in the first place discussion, Central was at Marion tonight. The Knights still undefeated, still ranked number one in Class 3A. Rocking the camo to support the National Guard. Stifling defense from the home team. Jair Rogers comes up with a loose ball, finishes at the other end for the first points of the game. After another central miss, this is Devin Kennedy going the length of the floor, fights through contact, make it seven nothing Knights. The Blazers managed only two points in the entire first quarter. There they are, that's on a pull up <laughs> Jay from Trayton Harris. We got him in there. there you Marion go. improves to 10 and 0 with a 50 to 28 victory. Well, a special evening at South Bend Clay High School. Longtime basketball coach Joe Huffenthal was recognized for recently winning his 300th game. And Colonial Wrestling coach Al Hartman honored for picking up his 500th win. Clay hosting St. Joe off the inbounds. Anthony Smiley drains the three ball. He's got three goggles. They're out to a three-point lead. How does Jerron Jones like it? Meh. <laughs> Not <laughs> impressed. Traylon Simpson with the nice take gets the ball to go off the window. St. Joe's lead is down to two. Indians would close it out, though. First shot won't go, but there's Dominic Faro for the putback. The Indians win it 56 to 44. Jerron Jones, get healthy, big fella. Yeah. Contrasting styles at the Hadaway Shack tonight with Adams hosting Mishawaka. Go to the fourth. Caveman leading with seconds remaining, but Adams' Jordan Simpson knocks down the three to make it a five-point game. The Eagles are still in it, and Carl, people are flipping Ooh. out. Literally, when Brandon Wadley knocks down a three, and that would make it a four-point contest. As the last chance for the Eagles here, McQuan Martin's three is off the mark as the buzzer sounds. Caveman, get out of there with a win, 58 to 54. Ooh, that was a thriller. One other NIC score to pass along for you. Washington stomped Covert from Michigan, 87-35. And with that, we're going to turn things over to the annual Bi-County Tournament. One of the staples in this area. Well, Oregon Davis, Glenn, Argos, and LaVille were all victorious yeah. earlier in the week, setting up a couple of really good semifinals. And those were tonight. We turn over the scene to LaVille, where the host Lancers were in action in the late game, taking on Argus. Adam Stanky, hiding in the weeds, kind of. Comes up with a steal, and then second chance is the charm. Lancers up 8-5. Nate Morris weaving his way through the lane for the Dragons. That would still make it a three-point LaVille lead. And then check this out. Blake Berger. Shaking dudes pulling up for two <laughs> after that. LaVille defends their home court 38 31. They will face the winner of this one, Oregon Davis and John Glenn. That would be tomorrow night for the title. John Glenn was pretty hot early on as Calvin Kirchner. They'll work it to him in the corner. He will drain the three ball as that puts the Falcons out to an eight point advantage. And if one is good, two is better. Kirchner again for three. He would single-handedly push the Falcons out to a 10-point lead, but Oregon Davis trying to stay in it. Carl Schechenberger, no relation, drives into the <laughs> lane and hits the lane, but it's all for naught as Glenn wins it 57-49. Cousin Carl. Well, in the <laughs> consolation rounds, it was Bremen taking on New Prairie. Two NSC foes both jumping to the NIC next year. That's Ryan Topper, pretty move to tie the game on the lay-in in the early goings. Then Grant Clockow for Bremen, kind of in some trouble, but able to get out of it. Drains a short J to make it six all. New Prairie, though, would pull away as Luke Ketterer. Bucket and the foul as well to go with it. Cougars win big, 63-39. to In the other consolation contest, Culver looking to snap a four-game losing streak as they took on Triton. Culver's John Kresk 
puts his puts this one in the bucket culvert with an early one point advantage but Triton's Jordan Anderson was just too darn good tonight. Here, he knocks down the three as he finishes with 14. Triton wins at 47-33. It's been entertaining all week long. We'll see what the championship game turns out like tomorrow for sure. We need a timeout, I think. <laughs> we do need a timeout. Hey, how about we take one? Why not? Hey, when we come back, first place teams in Michigan are going to hit the court as well. Lakeshore trying to hold on to its top spot in Edwardsburg, trying to take down conference leader Pawpaw. All that and much more coming up next on Hoop It Up.